Sometimes you need to react immediately to changes in your database. Perhaps you wanna place an order with a distributor whenever an item's inventory drops below a given threshold. Or perhaps you wanna send an email whenever the status of an order changes. Regardless of your use case, whenever you wanna react immediately to changes in your database, change streams and triggers can be a fantastic option. If you're just joining us in this quick start with MongoDB and Node.js series, welcome, so glad you're here. We began by walking through how to connect to a MongoDB database and then how to perform each of the CRUD, that's create, read, update, and delete operations. Then we moved on to more advanced topics like the aggregation framework and transactions. Today, we're gonna to cover change streams and triggers. For each one, I'll explain what it is and then walk through an example of how to use it. Let's kick things off with change streams. Change streams allow you to receive notifications about changes made to your MongoDB databases and collections. When you use change streams, you can choose to program actions that will be automatically taken whenever a change event occurs. Change streams utilize the aggregation framework, so you can choose to filter for specific change events or transform the change event documents. For example, Let's say that I want to be notified whenever a new listing in the Sydney, Australia market is added to the listings and reviews collection. I could create a change stream that monitors the listings and review collection and use an aggregation pipeline to match on the listings I'm interested in. Today, I'll walk you through three different ways to implement this change stream. I'm going to begin working in a basic template file. This code is structured very similar to the code you saw in the previous videos. If you have any questions about what this template code is doing, head back to that first video in the series. Now I've already connected to a database in MongoDB Atlas that has the sample data set loaded. Today I'm going to continue working in the sample Airbnb database. I find it helpful to have a script that will generate sample data for me when I'm testing change streams. So I wrote a script named change streams test data that will quickly generate sample data. You can grab a copy of this script in my GitHub repo if you wanna follow along. That script is gonna do the following. It's gonna create three new listings. Those are Opera House Views, Private Room in London, and Beautiful Beach House. Then it's gonna update two of those listings. It's gonna update Opera House Views and Beautiful Beach House. It's gonna create two more listings, Italian Villa and Sydney Harbor Home. And then finally, it's gonna delete a listing and that listing is the Sydney Harbor Home listing. So this script gives us a variety of CRUD operations we can use to test our change stream. Now that we're set up, let's explore three different ways to work with a change stream in Node.js. Regardless of how I monitor changes in the change stream, I wanna close the change stream after a certain amount of time. So I've written a helper function to do just that. As you can see, this function has two parameters. First, it has time in MS, which is the time in milliseconds after which the change stream should be closed. It defaults to 60,000 milliseconds, which is one minute. The second param is the change stream to be closed. So after the given amount of time, the function calls change stream.close, which is what will actually close the change stream. Now we are ready to start using change streams. The first way we will monitor a change stream is using the on function. The MongoDB Node.js drivers change stream class inherits from the node built-in class event emitter. As a result, we can use event emitters on function to add a listener function that would be called whenever a change occurs in the change stream. If that was a bit confusing, don't worry. It should become more clear as I start writing code. Let's write a function that will monitor changes in the change stream using event emitters on. So I'm gonna create an asynchronous function named monitor listings using event emitter. For parameters, let's use a connected Mongo client the time in milliseconds that indicates how long the change stream should be monitored. Let's set that default to 60,000 and an aggregation pipeline that the change stream will use. Now we need to access the collection we will monitor for changes. 
We want to monitor the listings and arrays collection. So we'll say const collection equals client.db sample Airbnb dot collection listings and reviews. Now we're ready to create our change stream. We'll say collection dot watch and we're going to pass the pipeline. Watch will return a change stream, so we'll store what's returned in a constant named change stream. Once we've got our change stream, we can add a listener to it. So I'll say change stream dot on. We want to listen for a change event, and then we need to define our listener. So let's just create an anonymous function, and we'll name the variable next, and then let's just log next. So really, we aren't doing much here. We're just doing logging, right? But this is where you could do the exciting stuff. This is where you can fire an email or place an order or take whatever intelligent action you need to based on the change in the collection. Now, I could choose to leave the change stream open indefinitely. Instead, I'm going to call that helper function to close the change stream after the given amount of time. So I'll say await close change stream and I'm going to pass that time in milliseconds and the change stream. Now that I've implemented the function, let's try it out. I'm going to go up to main and I'm going to call that function by saying await monitor listings using event emitter. And for now, I'm just going to pass the client and I'll set the time in milliseconds to 15,000. So it's 15 seconds. Let me save this file. I've opened two terminals at the bottom of VS Code. So let me expand the terminal so we can see more. The left terminal is where I'm going to run the script that will open the change stream and watch for changes. So let me kick this off. The change stream will open for 15 seconds. In the right terminal, I'm going to kick off change streams test data, which will create, update, and delete documents. We're getting a lot of output here. Let me scroll up to the top. Recall that my code is printing out each change event that it receives. So looking at that first change, we can see that change streams test data is creating a new Airbnb listing. The change stream gives us a lot of information about this change to the database. So let's walk through each piece. Each change event has an underscore ID. This underscore ID can be used when you want to resume a change stream, and we'll talk a bit about this more later. We can see that the operation type is insert. We can also see when the event occurred. Next up, we have the full document. Here we can see the document that was inserted into the database. This can be super helpful when you're writing custom code. For example, Maybe you're sending an email to notify users of new listings in the areas they are interested in. You might want to include the name and address of the listing in the email you're sending, and you can get that information here in the change event without having to write a separate query to get that data. Next, we have NS, which stands for namespace. This is the database and collection affected by the event. And finally, we have the document key. This is the underscore ID of the document that was inserted. And you can see the document key in the change event matches the ID that is printed in change streams test data. I'll scroll quickly through the other change events. We can see another change event for the second listing that was created and another for the third. After the inserts, change streams test data updates one of the listings. We can see many of the same information that we saw for inserts. We can also see update description, which shows which fields were updated and which fields were removed. If you wanted to see the full document and not just the updated fields, you can configure the change stream to include that as well. Okay, next up, we see another update. Next, we see two more inserts. These look pretty similar to what we saw previously, so I'm just gonna keep scrolling. The last thing change streams test data does is delete a document. Here we see information similar to what we've seen before. The event ID, the operation type, which is delete, the time the event occurred, the namespace for the event, and the ID of the document that was deleted. 
At the very bottom here, we can see the change stream was closed. In this example, I captured and logged all of the change events. In some cases, you're not gonna care about all of the change events that occur in a collection. Instead, you're gonna to wanna to limit what changes you are monitoring. You can use an aggregation pipeline to filter the changes or transform the change stream event documents. So let's think back to my objective. I wanna be notified whenever a new listing is created in the Sydney, Australia market. I'm gonna create an aggregation pipeline to filter for only those changes in the listings and reviews collection. If you're not familiar with aggregation pipelines, check out my earlier video in this series. So I'm gonna hop back to the code and I'm gonna create a constant named pipeline. I'm gonna use dollar $match to filter the change events. I'm looking for new listings in the collection, so I want the operation type to be insert. And then I wanna check where the listing is located. So I'll say full document dot address dot country is Australia. And let's narrow that a bit more down to Sydney. So I'll say full document dot address dot market is Sydney. I wanna use this pipeline to filter the changes in the change stream. I'm gonna pass this pipeline to the function that creates our change stream. Okay, I'm gonna save these changes and let me expand the terminal again. I'm gonna clear the output and then I'm gonna kick off both scripts once again. All right, this time we got a lot less output. Let me scroll up to the top of the output. The first event is for an operation of type insert in Sydney, Australia. And so is the second. The other inserts that were not in Sydney were automatically filtered out. The other change events like updates and deletes were also filtered out. As you can see, the aggregation pipeline is a really powerful and easy way to filter and transform your change events. The first way we monitored the change stream was using event emitters on function. Let's take a look at another way to work with change streams. We can create a while loop that waits for the next element in the change stream by using has next from the MongoDB Node.js drivers change stream class. Let's create a function that will monitor changes in the change stream using change streams has next. I'm gonna create an asynchronous function named monitor listings using has next. I'm gonna use the same parameters that I used in the last function. So I'll have a connected Mongo client, a time in milliseconds that indicates how long the change stream should be open. And I'm gonna set the default to 60,000 and an aggregation pipeline that the chain stream will use. The first thing I wanna do in this function is access the collection that I wanna monitor for changes. So I'll say const collection equals client.db sample Airbnb dot collection listings and reviews. Now I'm ready to create the change stream. I'll do this the same way that I did in the previous function. I'll say const change stream equals collection dot watch pipeline. I could choose to leave this change stream open indefinitely. Instead, I'm gonna call the helper function that will set a timer and close the change stream. So I'll say close change stream and I'll pass time in milliseconds and the change stream. Now let's actually monitor the change stream for changes. I'm gonna create a while loop that will wait for new changes in the change stream. So I'll say await change stream dot has next. Has next will wait to return true until a new change arrives in the change stream. I can get the change stream event by saying await change stream dot next. I could choose to store this event in a variable and then I could do something really valuable and exciting with this event. Instead, I'm just gonna log it for now. 
Has next will throw an error as soon as the chain stream is closed. So I'm gonna wrap this section in a try catch. If an error is thrown, I'm gonna to check to see if the chain stream is closed. If it's closed, I'm gonna log that information. So I'll say the chain stream is closed, will not wait on any more changes. If the chain stream is not closed, something unexpected happened. So I'm just gonna throw that error on. Now that I've implemented this function, let's try it out. So I'm gonna go back up to main and I'm gonna replace this call. And instead I'm gonna say monitor listings using has next. And I'll pass the client and set the time to 15 seconds. And uh, let's add a wait here. Okay, let me save this file. I'm gonna expand the terminal and clear the output. Let me go ahead and run both scripts again. Okay, a lot of output here. Let me scroll up a bit. Okay, we can see we're getting chain stream events just like we did before. We can see events for insert, 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 update, update, insert, insert, and delete. So it looks like we got them all. Now, just as I did previously with the last function, I could choose to pass a pipeline to this function in order to filter the events. I'll leave this as an exercise for you to try on your own. So far, we've covered two ways to monitor change streams in Node.js. Let's examine a third way. Let's use Node's stream API. In order to use the stream module, we're gonna to need to load it. So all the way at the top of the file, I'm gonna say const stream equals require stream. Okay, looks good. Let's go create a function. Let's make this an asynchronous function named monitor listings using stream API. I'm gonna stick with the same parameters that I used in the first two functions. So I'll need a connected Mongo client, a time in milliseconds that indicates how long the change stream should be monitored. As always, I'm gonna set the default to 60 seconds and an aggregation pipeline that the change stream will use. Okay, let's start implementing this function. Just like I did with other functions, I'll create a constant for the listings and reviews collection. So I'll say const collection equals client.db sample Airbnb dot collection listings and reviews. Now I'm gonna create the chain stream in the same way I did for the other two functions. I'll say const chain stream equals collection dot watch pipeline. Okay, now I'm ready to monitor the change stream. So I'll say change stream dot stream. This is gonna return a node readable stream. I'm gonna use readables pipe to pull the data out of the stream and write it to the console. And just like the other functions, I'm simply logging this, but once again, this is where you can do the exciting work that's gonna get you your helpful business value. You can do so much more here than just log the change event. I could choose to leave the chain stream open indefinitely. Instead, I'm gonna call that helper function that's gonna set a timer and close the chain stream. So I'll say await close change stream, time in milliseconds and change stream. Okay. That's all we need to do for this function. Let's call it. So going back up to main, I'm gonna replace this call with our new one. So I'll say await monitor listings using stream API. I'm gonna pass the client. And this time I'm gonna stick with the default time and the default empty pipeline. Let me save this. All right, I'm gonna clear the terminals and then let me run these. As you can see, we are getting a lot of output here for all of those change stream events. I can run change streams.test data again, and you can see we're getting even more output. 
Now, just as a reminder, I could choose to pass a pipeline here and filter those change events. At some point, your application will likely lose the connection to the change stream. Perhaps a network event will occur and a connection between the application and the database will be dropped. Or perhaps your application will crash and need to be restarted. But you're a 10x developer, right? That's never going to happen to you, right? Okay, moving on. In any of those cases, you may want to resume the change stream where you previously left off so you don't lose any of those change events. Each change stream event document contains a resume token. The Node.js driver automatically stores the resume token in the underscore ID of the change event document. And we saw that a few minutes ago when we were looking at the change event documents. The application can pass the resume token when creating a new change stream. The change stream will include all events that happened after the event associated with the given resume token. The MongoDB Node.js driver will automatically attempt to reestablish connections in the event of transient network errors or elections. In those cases, the driver will use its cached copy of the most recent resume token so that no change stream events are lost. In the event of an application failure or restart, the application will need to pass the resume token when creating the change stream in order to ensure no change stream events are lost. Keep in mind, the driver will lose its cached copy of the most recent resume token when the application restarts, so your application should store the resume token. For more information and sample code for resuming change streams, check out the official documentation. So far, we've talked about different ways to monitor change streams. Change streams allow you to react immediately to changes in your database. Now, when you use change streams, you probably want to ensure that your application is always up and running so you aren't missing any of those change events. Keeping an application up and running is certainly possible, but it can be challenging, right? This is where MongoDB Atlas triggers come in. Atlas triggers allow you to execute functions in real time based on database events, just like change streams, or on scheduled intervals, just like a cron job. Atlas triggers have a few big advantages. First, you don't have to worry about programming the change stream. You simply program the function that will be executed when the database event is fired. Second, you don't have to worry about managing the server where your change stream code is running. Atlas takes care of the server management for you. And third, you get a handy UI to configure your trigger, which means you've got less code to write. I'm going to create a trigger to do the same thing I did with change streams earlier. I want to be alerted when new listings are created in the Sydney, Australia market. Now, instead of working locally in a code editor to create and monitor a change stream, I'm going to create a trigger in the Atlas web UI. So I'm here on the triggers page in Atlas, and I'm going to click add trigger. I can choose to create a database trigger or a scheduled trigger. I'm going to stick with a database trigger. I'm going to name this trigger new listing in Sydney. I'm going to leave the trigger enabled and I'm going to leave the event ordering enabled as well. In the link data sources selection box, I'll choose cluster zero, which is where my sample Airbnb database is stored. Then I'm going to click link. This will take just a moment, so I'm going to skip ahead through the magic of editing. All right, my cluster is now linked. Now we're ready for the trigger source details. For cluster, I'll select cluster zero. For database, I'll select sample Airbnb. For collection name, I'll select listings and reviews. For operation type, I can choose which operations I want to watch, right? Insert update, delete, and or replace. I'm going to select insert. I want the full document to be in the change event, so I'm going to enable this option. For event type, I'm going to stick with function. This default function code includes a lot of code to help you get started. I'm just going to delete all of this, and I'm simply going to log the document. So I'll say console.log. I want to get the change event dot full document. 
And then let's stringify that so that it will print nicely. Now, just like I mentioned with the functions I wrote in the node script, I'm not really doing anything exciting here. I'm just logging. But this is where you could implement the exciting and useful actions based on the change events. I'm going to expand the advanced section. I want to limit the change events just to those in the Sydney, Australia market. So I'll say full document dot address dot country is Australia and full document dot address dot market is Sydney. Keep in mind that this dollar match statement is just like the aggregation pipeline I passed to the change stream back when I was working in my Node.js script. All right, all of this looks good. I'm gonna click save. The trigger is now enabled. From this point on, the function to log the change event will be called whenever a new document in the Sydney Australia market is inserted in the listings and reviews collection. Now that the trigger is enabled, let's create sample data that will fire the trigger. So I'm going to jump back to VS Code and I'm going to run change streams test data just like I did when I was testing the change stream code in the Node.js script. Now I'm going to go back to Atlas. Let's take a look at the results. When I created the trigger, MongoDB Atlas automatically created a Realm application for me named Triggers Realm App. Let me open that up. The function associated with the trigger doesn't currently do much. It simply logs the change documents. So let's take a look at the logs. Here we can see two entries in the logs. Let me expand those. Both listings are in the Sydney market. So even though our script inserts five documents, makes updates to two documents and then deletes another document, our function is only being called for the two new listings in Sydney. Perfect. Triggers give you so much power and so many possibilities with very little programming. Let's wrap up this video. Today we explored four different ways to accomplish the same task of reacting immediately to changes in a MongoDB database. I showed you three different ways to work with change streams in Node.js using Node.js's built-in event emitter class, using MongoDB Node.js driver's change stream class, and using the stream API. Finally, I showed you how to create an Atlas trigger that will monitor changes. In all four cases, we were able to use dollar $match to filter the change stream events. The examples we explored today all did relatively simple things whenever an event was fired, right? They simply logged the change events. But change streams and triggers become really powerful when you start doing more in response to change events. For example, you might want to fire alarms or send emails or place orders or update other systems or do a hundred other amazing, incredible things, right? The sky's the limit. If you want a quick reference for what I showed you today, check out the blog series I wrote that covers the exact same topics. I also have a GitHub repo that contains the code I wrote today. So I've included links to both of those in the description below. This is unfortunately the final video in the Node.js and MongoDB quick start series. At least for now, I've had a blast. So if you have ideas for other topics you'd like to see covered, or you've got any questions about things you saw in this video series, please join me in the MongoDB community. My teammates and I are there every day chatting with members of our developer community. They're asking questions, we're answering them, we're working together, and we're also discussing best practices. So come on, join the community. I would love to see you there.